education is our passport to the future and tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Hello everyone, I am Tuhina Pandya and the topic for my TED talk is Arise, Awake and Grow as a Student. In my TED talk, I will be discussing five mantras or qualities which can make anyone a successful learner. Now these qualities are imperative to imbibe if we want to reach for the stars. There is an ancient Sanskrit shloka which goes like this. Kaak cheshta bako dhyanam shwan nidra tathai vacha alpahari grihatyagi vidhyarthi panche lakshanam. Now let's look at the first quality, kaak cheshta. Kaak means a crow and cheshta means effort. Kaak cheshta means that a student should always be hard working like a crow. We all know the story of the crow, right? That by its perseverance was able to quench its thirst by throwing pebbles into the pitcher. A dream does not become reality through some magic. Nor was this event made possible by building castles in the air. It takes sweat, determination and consistent hard work to make it to the pinnacle. The same sentiments have been echoed by the famous scientist Thomas Edison when he said, Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Now, moving on to the next quality of a Vidyarthi, Bako Dhyanam, the concentration of a crane. If you look at a crane standing on one leg, completely focused into the waters. If you see, the crane will allow the small fish to swim around and waits until the big fish arrives. Similarly in life, we may face conflicts or health issues or failure, but we need to rise above them and focus on what is actually important. The third quality a student needs to possess is Shwan Nidra. Shwan means a dog and Nidra means sleep. Shwan Nidra implies that a student should have that alertness like a dog that wakes up even at the slightest of noise. Research shows that either pursuing a hobby or staying mindful of our surroundings and nature helps with how well we think and collaborate. It also boosts our focus and creativity. I remember this particular day when I was feeling a bit low. I did not feel like playing with the other kids that day. So I went up to the terrace and saw the children play in our society garden. A small child caught my attention. He must have been five or six years old. I saw him trying to leap over a high green hedge at the end of the lawn. The hedge seemed too high for his little body. I also had time to think that he would not be able to make it. But in that very moment, I saw that boy jump triumphantly over the green barrier and I saw the greatest burst of ecstatic freedom in that tiny little boy. His indomitable spirit keeps coming back to my mind in moments when I feel disheartened. So my point here is don't just pay attention academically in school, pay attention in life as well. The fourth quality is Alpahari. Alpa means less and Ahar means food. Alpahari means that a student should eat to suffice his energy needs, but not so full that makes one sleepy or lazy. There's also a hidden meaning to this thought. Not only should we check what goes into our tummy, but we should also check what type of inputs we give to our other senses, like feeding our ears with words of wisdom and feeding our mind with affirmative thoughts. And the final quality, as you can see here, is Griha Tyagi. Griha means home and Tyagi means one who gives up. Griha Tyagi basically means to give up one's home. Now, let me elaborate on this topic. If you see, education in ancient India was quite different from what we have today. Earlier, a child had to leave his home in order to get education and go and stay with his teacher in a Gurukul. Now, Home is the place where we feel the most comfortable. So if we apply the thought of Grihatyagi in today's world, 
it would mean getting out of our comfort zones to gain knowledge now let me tell you my story i recently migrated from another school and joined the zeba family starting at this new school brought with it feelings of anticipation worry and anxiety for me i was not comfortable with this change at all i felt kind of edgy and uneasy leaving my old school along with its friendships a known pattern of life and familiar teachers whom i cherish now when you stay in one place for a long time it's easy to forget that things might be done differently elsewhere there's a lot to be learned from exposing yourself to a new school community <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to me i'm learning new studying patterns and have become quite flexible with my new friends i'm experiencing different ways a subject is being taught and i feel that my teachers have all the resources to make me feel welcome in this new environment they were quick to notice my speaking skills and <laughs> here i am standing on this prestigious platform if this isn't growth then what is my initial discomfort about switching schools has now been replaced with the feeling that i can adapt to changes and this transition has taught me the art of blending in a new environment and boosted my interpersonal skills and looking at the achievements of the school students on the notice boards i feel that i am in the right place to explore myself so comfort ladies and gentlemen is like a drug once you get used to comfort it becomes addictive all our fears self doubts and insecurities are in our head so what's the fear that's holding you back what are you not saying or doing just because it's outside your comfort zone i say that look fear in the eye push your limits and embrace challenges because life begins at the edge of your comfort zone it was a great honor to have you all attentive thank you